चेंजेस in ecg as pathological which in a normal pregnancy are considered to be as normal or physiological it's because the normal pregnancy brings about various changes in ecg these changes during pregnancy should be interpreted with caution by physicians it is necessary to understand the normal physiological changes which in turn help us in better management of those with a cardiac disease so before discussing the changes of ecg in pregnancy let us discuss the basic ecg interpretation so the 12 lead ecg is made up of three standard limbs 1 2 3 and the augmented limbs AVR, AVL, AVF, and six precordial leads, which are V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6, as you can see here. Now, every ECG has got P, Q, R, S, T wave complexes along with a certain segment. Let us briefly discuss those waves and those segments. So, coming to the P wave, P wave basically. indicates the atrial depolarization okay so in the heart we have uh, right atrium right ventricle left atrium left ventricle and on the top of the right ventricle we have sa node the impulse which passes from the sa node which causes the depolarization of the right atrium so that is indicated by p wave in ecg In other words I want to say that the P wave occurs when the sinus node also known as the sinoatrial node creates an action potential that depolarizes the atria Now in a normal ECG the P wave is always a uh, positive upright by positive means upright in lead 2 and negative in AVR usually positive in lead 1 and it may be positive negative or biphasic in lead 3 it is of variable polarity in lead avl so remember these important points next comes the qrs complex the qrs complex is the main spine seen in the standard ecg you can see it is the most obvious part of ecg which is clearly visible basically the qrs complex represents the depolarization of the ventricles as you can see from this figure it shows the beginning of systole and ventricular contraction now in this qrs complex the most visible part is that of the q wave so we need to discuss a little bit about q wave technically a q wave indicates that the net direction of early depolarization uh, that is qrs electrical forces projects towards the negative pole of the lead axis in the question so how much is the size of this q wave q wave is of 0.04 second 1 uh, mm means a one small box on the ecg as you can see on the ecg each small box represents the 0.04 second and that is equivalent to 1 mm so q wave is of this duration and greater than 1/3 of the uh, r wave amplitude in the same lead may be pathological okay by this uh, we mean that it should be lesser than uh, one third of r wave amplitude if it is greater than one third of r wave amplitude in the same lead so that might be pathological q wave next comes the t wave the t wave on an uh, ecg represents the typical ventricular repolarization so that is basically the t wave you can see from the main ecg uh, the t waves after qrs complexes indicating ventricular repolarization now 
Along with these important waves, it's important to understand the intervals and segments in the normal ECG. So P wave starts from the P sorry PR interval starts from the P wave to the start of QRS complex. That is the PR interval. The QRS interval starts from the end of the QRS complex. Sorry, it starts from the start to the end of QRS complex. That is QRS interval. The ST segment starts from the end of QRS complex to the start of T wave. Here's, uh, it is important to note this J point. J point is basically the junction between QRS complex and ST segments. Now this figure represents the different um, complexes, different waves in the uh, ECG. As I have told you before that QRS complex uh, represents the ventricular uh, depolarization and P wave represents the atrial depolarization. The R wave... Uh, uh, the in the initial positive deflection of the ventricular depolarization is indicated by the R wave. S wave, the negative deflection following the Q wave. Okay, following the R wave, sorry. And the Q wave, the first uh, downward wave of the QRS complex, the Q wave is often absent. The R wave represents ventricular repolarization. Now let's come to the main topic that is interpretation of ECG in pregnancy. Before studying the changes um, in ECG during pregnancy, it's very important to know how to calculate the heart rate on ECG. Okay, because heart rate is affected in, in pregnancy and that affects the ECG as well. Okay, so there are a number of strategies for determining the heart rate. A simple quick technique is to find a QRS complex that falls on the major ventricle, uh, major vertical grid line one. And then count the number of large boxes next to the QRS complex, that is two. Then dividing this number to 300 gives you heart rate. In the ECG below, there are two large squares between QRS complexes. So 300 divided by two gives a heart rate of 150 beats per minute. That is an example. So change number one in uh, pregnancy is that there is increase in heart rate, which you can see on the ECG strip. Okay, so there is tachycardia. Tachycardia means increase heart rate over 100 beats per minute. So in the normal sinus rhythm, you see that that if you f uh, follow the rule which I told you, uh, between these two QRS complexes, if you divide the, if you count the number of large boxes, here you can see that we have three large boxes. So 300 divided by three, almost 100 beats per minute is the heart rate in this ECG. But uh, when you check the ECG in uh, pregnancy, you would see that uh, we have lesser number of boxes. So 300 divided by two, that gives almost 150 beats per minute so that is uh, what we see in the pregnancy and is considered to be as a normal so this is called the sinus tachycardia although 150 is quite a um, uh, high heart rate but uh, um, up to 120 it is considered to be as acceptable so let us study the change number two which is the q wave in Li 3 so during pregnancy the q wave should be assessed and their significance determined particularly in regard to the diagnosis of myocardial infarction i mean to say that we need to find out where you are seeing these q waves because it's important that uh, q wave um, are different in pregnancy um, their uh, appearance is different in different leads you need to identify in which lead are you seeing these small Q waves? So during pregnancy, small Q waves are commonly a normal finding in the inferior leads, uh, which include lead 3 and AVF, and anterior lateral leads, AVL, lead 1, V5, V6. So frequency of occurrence uh, of definite Q wave in the chest lead V5, V, uh, V4, V5, V6 increase in a pregnant woman when compared to the control and also in the third trimester when compared to the second trimester. You can see from this ECG those uh, Q waves. Change number three, reduction in the PR interval. So the normal PR interval should be 0 0.12 to 0 0.2 seconds or 3 to 5 small squares in duration. 
here you can see the normal pr interval which covers uh, almost um, you can see 1 2 3 4 four uh, small uh, large boxes or small boxes are covered in it so it is normal e small box is of 0.04 second means uh, 40 millisecond so what happens in pregnancy as you can see in this ecg we have the shortened pr interval as here it uh, covers about uh, two small boxes so that is shortened change number 4 left axis deviation now how to find the normal axis of the heart okay in the normal axis you can see uh, that in lead 1 we have positive deflection and in the lead avf we have positive deflection but if in the lead 1 we have positive deflection in avl we have negative deflection that indicates that we have got possible lad means left axis deviation if in the lead 1 we have negative wave in the avl we have positive wave that indicates the right axis deviation and And if in both lead one and AVL we have negative waves, then that show extreme axis. So here you can see left axis deviation in the ECG in pregnancy in lead one positive deflection in AVL we have on uh, in AVF we have negative deflection. So the question arises why is there left axis deviation in ECG in pregnancy? The research just shows that with increased heart rate of pregnancy, the PR and QT interval shorten. There may also also be slight leftward or rightward axis deviation due to rotation of the heart from elevation of the diaphragm or the uh, or the gravid uterus so basically the left axis deviation is a condition where in the mean electric activity uh, mean electrical axis of the ventricular contraction of the heart lies in the frontal plane direction between minus 30 and minus 90 This is reflected by QRS complex positive in lead one and negative in lead AVF and lead two, as you can see from this ECG. This is again a summary of uh, whatever changes takes place in pregnancy, as I have already explained those to you. But uh, you can see that it, there is increase in heart rate, Q wave in lead three, reduction in the PR interval, and left. Uh, word deviation of the main main QRS complex. I already explained it to you. So let's come to discuss the change number five, which is the inverted T wave in the lead three V one and V two. So in this ECG, you can see inverted T waves in lead three V one and V two, which occurs normally in pregnancy. But in normal ECG, you will not come across inverted T wave in the lead three. This is again the summary. Okay, in pregnancy we have reduction in PR interval, small Q wave in lead three and AVF, and flat or inverted T wave in lead three, V one and V two, and heart rate increases by ten to twenty percent. Okay, thank you so much for your kind listening. That was a little bit description about the uh, interpretation of ECG in pregnancy. Thank you so much.